Okay, thank you for the invitation. So, so I'll be speaking about, okay. Oh yeah, you can see. So about a joint work with uh, Konstantin Tohomiro. So it's about the mixing time of the switch chain on bipartite graphs. So the talk will be uh, uh, like self-contained, but if just in case I'm saying something you, you don't understand or whatever, just yeah, feel free to stop me, please. Okay, so the object of interest in, in this talk, let me just Yeah, maybe we uh, think go. Yeah. Okay, now it's. No, I think some uh, go here maybe is not muted or. No, no, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, so the object of interest are bipartite graphs. So let me fix some notations. So they are regular bipartite bipartite graphs. So we have left vertices. So I'm gonna always fix n to be the number of vertices. So n left vertices. And they have n right vertices. So left right vertices. And I'm gonna connect uh, each vertex on the left to some vertices on the right. Maybe here three. This one is connected to this one, say, to this one, etc. So with the condition that each vertex on the left is connected to D vertices on the right and vice versa. So it is D regular. So each left right vertex has D right left vertex uh, neighbors. So usually, I mean, we, we don't need this in this talk, but uh, usually I like to to uh, to represent uh, the graph with its adjacency matrix. So so you would look at the adjacency matrix, which is an n by, I mean, here it's a bipartite graph. So I have the list of the left n vertices and the list of the n right vertices. So between the left vertices, there is no connection. I'm going to put zero here. And then the left vertices are connected to the right vertices. So here you have a zero on matrix, which is I mean, symmetric. Okay, so so these are adjacency matrix, uh, adjacency matrices. Uh, so we spent some uh, several years of the recent years studying them. So with my, my co-authors, uh, Litvak, Litova, uh, uh, Tomshak, and Tihomirov. So what we studied, we studied many statistics of, of, of the spectral statistics of these matrices. So for instance, we studied uh, the limiting spectral distribution. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say that I'm also considering, sorry, I'm, I, there is not no randomness yet. So. So the randomness will gonna be the uniform model. So I'm just picking a graph uniformly at random from, from the set of all the variables. So we studied limiting spectral distribution. And we actually showed that it belongs to the universality class of the circle or low distribution. We also studied uh, questions like invertibility of this, of this matrix. We also studied the, sing the smallest singular value, for example. And we also studied spectral gap of this matrix. I mean, many, many things about, about these matrices, just to say that like many, many statistics, statistics are understood about uh, these graphs. Uh, many questions are very well studied. However, the questions I'm gonna ask today, like it should have been asked before these questions, like it is a more foundational question question. So let me maybe just set up one more notation. I'm going to denote BIPE and D just the set of all uh, D-regular bipartite graphs. 
on n vertices. Yeah, maybe I should mention that we're not the only one studying these things. Okay, I, I just mentioned uh, a sample of this. And uh, we, I'm going to also denote pi and d to be the uniform measure on, on this set. So the question we're going to ask is, is really a, a, a basic question in itself. So let me say it's, a, it's actually a foundational question. So how, how do we generate this measure? So how do we generate a, a random uh, bipartite graph? So whenever I say random, I mean with respect to, I mean, it's uniformly distributed. So one way to do this is to use uh, what we call the configuration model. Let me, I, let me just try to write it. Maybe I'll move to the next page. So the configuration model So you you kind of force your graph to be to be irregular. So you you put your n vertices to the left and you create buckets from each each vertex. So you can create a bucket with d cables. So here it's d cables. You do the same for each vertex. You do the same on the right. And then what you do is that you just randomly match match these cables. You, you randomly connect. So I'm gonna, for example, connect this one to this one, then this one to this one, but maybe I'll connect this one to this one, that's it. Okay. So so create uh, D, let's say, uh, buckets, then connect randomly. cables and then just suppress again the, the buckets. So what's the issue with this construction? Suppress uh, buckets. So it's it's very good. It creates uh, the D regularities that I would like. Each vertex now is connected, each vertex on the left is connected to D vertices on the right. The only problem is that as you see here, the first vertex is now connected through two edges to the first vertex on the right. So I am creating multiple edges. So, so the real problem here with this construction is that it creates multiple edges. So I'm not gonna end up with a simple graph as, as I would like. Okay. Maybe I haven't mentioned this, but bipartite, the, the set that bipartite that I denoted at the beginning is a set of simple bipartite. We cannot have multiple edges. In. Okay, so maybe let me just here uh, still, I mean, we have we have a we have a, some set of graphs which are created this way. Let me denote them. Let me give them a name. So let me give conf and D the set of all uh, graphs. So let me maybe emphasize that they are all multi graphs. obtained from the configuration model. And I'm gonna define in a bit just a measure on, on, on the set. But let me just recall how are we construct how are we doing the configuration model? What we are basically doing, we're just basically matching randomly these cables. So a way to do this is just to basically do proceed to a random permutation of these cables. And then just match them, right? So, so here, what are we doing is that we are taking sigma, a random permutation, station of one to n. Uh, sorry, one to n d, because each vertex has d cables. So I have n d cables, and then connect. I the vertex I on the left to sigma. Okay. 
and then so forth. So, so I mean, it's clear that the configuration model is inheriting its uh, probability measure from the permutation, from, from this permutation. So let me also give it the name. So I'm going to also denote perm and D, the set of all permutations. on one to nd and i'm gonna give it also a name the the measure which uh, which is uniform on, on the set of permutation let me see okay so, so i'll give it pi perm oh this one so pi perm is a uniform measure on the set configuration oh, oh, sorry on the set of permutations And this measure just induces a measure on, on uh, the set of configuration. It's very clear what it is, this measure. So we're randomly uh, matching these cables. The only issue is that I need to not forget that every time I permute these guys here inside this the same bucket, I'm resulting in the same multigraph, right? So, so I need to take care of, of these factors here. But still, I, I can write basically what is, what is the measure that I'm going to call pi conf on the set of configurations. So I'm going to write pi conf of, of a, of a multigraph G, which is created this way, just the same. So I have one over ND factorial just because I have, I'm choosing one permutation at random. I just need to remove the permutation of the bucket to the inside each bucket. So I have factorial D for the permutation inside each bucket, but I have two N of them. So factorial D to the power two N. But then as well, I mean, uh, I need to take care of you see, in this particular case here, whenever I had two edges here, I need to re-add the, their permutation. I cannot remove their permutation, right? Because it means it's just a small technical detail. So what I need to add here is just the product over all ij of the multiplicity, multiplicity of the edge ij. So this as its name, this is the multiplicity of IG. Okay. So, I mean, we can estimate this thing. So, we can basically calculate the probability that this configuration model is leading to a, uh, to a simple graph. So, we can calculate pi conf of the set of bipartite graphs. And, I mean, you can do the calculations. This is of order e to the minus d minus square over 2. Okay. So, I mean, where I want to go from this is I want to, I want us to notice that as D goes to infinity with N, with the number of vertices, if D is growing with the number of vertices, then it is unlikely that the configuration model will give me a simple graph. That conf will lead to a simple graph. Okay, and as I will see in the, in the, as we will see later in the talk, the case, I mean, when we are dealing with the degree which is growing is really much harder than when we are dealing with a sparse, uh, sparse graphs. Okay, so maybe one, one last thing here that uh, let's just record just from this formula, just because we have this. Let's just recall just for, or illustration that the size of the set of bipartite graph is exponential in, in ND. So it's of order e, e to the power ND log ND. So whenever I put this like uh, approximation, I just mean up to a constant, uh, which we don't care about. Okay. But this constant doesn't depend on, on anything meaningful. Okay, so okay, so we're not going to use a configuration model. What we're going to use, we're going to use basically Markov chain to generate to generate this measure. So, so to generate to generate pi by uh, we're going to use Markov chains. So the idea here is is very uh, standard. So let me just summarize quickly the what we what we care about so if we have a uh, probability space equipped with a measure so let me everything is finite here so it's a finite probability space 
And I would like to, to generate this, this measure of pi. If I can find a Markov chain. So maybe maybe just let me take it reversible, just not to not to forget later on. So let's take it reversible, ergodic, everything you like. And with stationary measure pi. I'm gonna denote Q the generator and P, P the, the transition matrix. So what we have is we know that if we start this uh, this Markov chain from from some vertex and we run it sufficiently, we're gonna uh, we're gonna generate our, our measure. So the whole idea is to know when should we stop, right? When should we stop for us to be approximately approximately equal to to this uh, to this uh, stationary measure? So uh, yeah, so how fast is this computation? So two quantities which measures this are what we call the relaxation time and the mixing time. So let me just say what is exact what is the relaxation time. And then what is the mixing time? So the relaxation time, we can look at it as, as being an asymptotic mixing time. So it's uh, some property which is happening at infinite. So so just using that uh, this this um, uh, the multiplicativity of of uh, of pt so what we can what we have is that the limit as t goes to infinity of the maximum distance from pt to the stationary measure if i take this to the power one over t so the distance in total variation okay this is equal to some lambda star and we're going to define the relaxation time as being one over log one over lambda star. So, okay, so just see it as being some asymptotic mixing time, asymptotic uh, measure of how close we are to the stationary measure. What we will be important later on is that this, this quantity here is actually the spectral gap, just because I'm taking reversible uh, Markov chains. So this is equal to one minus lambda min of minus k. I mean, I took minus q, it's just a normalization. Sometimes you take it minus q. As a mixing time, you, you need something more precise. You are looking for, uh, maybe I should here emphasize that this is of q. The mixing time, I'm just gonna, sorry, mix. Okay. This is the minimum time that I need for me to be close to some particular error from the stationary measure. So the, the, the tradition is to take uh, one fourth. Okay. So Q, sorry, PT. And the whole question is to basically just estimate these two quantities. So as you may expect, T mix is something which is more precise than the relaxation time. So we always have that the relaxation time is actually uh, smaller than the mixing time up to some constant. But you also have the reverse up to some error, which is uh, log of one over the size of your set. I mean, the size of your set of, or if you want the, pro, the smallest probability in your set. So for us, if you want, okay, let's just, let me just write it. So the minimum probability for us, it's a uniform measure. So it's what we pay the, I mean, the, 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 the comparison between the two leads the log of the, of the size of your, of your set. Okay, so let's, this is just to to set up the things. So let's just go back to 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 bipartite graphs. So what is the chain we're gonna consider on on bipartite graph? It's it's kind of a natural chain which is uh, which is very well studied actually. So it's called the switch chain as you may expect. So so the idea is the following. So you have these 
left vertices, these right vertices. So they are connected somehow. Sorry. Like this. So what you do is that you just pick two edges. So for instance, this one and this one, and you destroy them and you replace them by, by, their, by their flip. You flip them basically. Okay. So I'm gonna destroy this one, destroy this one. So yeah, okay, this, this one here was not valid because I'm creating a multiple edge. So I cannot basically switch them because if I switch them, then I will have two edges relating to vertex one to vertex two. So this is not allowed. This, so I stay where I am, but let me pick another example. So let's say I picked this edge and this one, these two, I can flip them. Uh, so what do I get? I get, so I flip them like this, okay. So in terms of the adjacency matrix, if you like, I usually like to think in terms of the adjacency matrix, you have some minor, which is here, some connection one and you have two edges, which correspond to this, to this minor one, one. And then what you do is that you basically just flip this minor here. So if you have a minor, which is one, one, zero, one, for example, you cannot do the switching because you will be creating a multiple edge. Okay, so switch chain. So let me just try it as a generator of, of this chain. So you, So this one is on the set of bipartite graphs. So cube of bipartite between two graphs, G and G prime. So they need to defer by, by a switch. So if, if not, if, uh, if not, then I don't, I don't move from G to G prime. So uh, it's just one over picking uh, two edges. So I have ND edges, so one over ND choose two. So if G is neighbor to G prime, neighbor by, by what I just explained and uh, uh, zero, I mean, not zero. So let, I mean, you just normalize it so that the sum is just equal to zero over, over, over a row. So it's minus the sum of uh, QG, uh, Q bipartite GG prime. If, uh, I'm gonna use a second letter, sorry. Yes, if G equals G prime and zero isomers. Okay, and the question now is, is clear. So the question is, what is relaxation and mixing? So the conjecture, the conjecture is that the relaxation time is of order ND. So T relaxation is of order ND. Again, it's just up to constants. It's of order ND and the mixing time, it is of order log of the size of, of our set, which is in, in many times, this is the case usually. So this is ND log ND. So which is log of the size of bipartite graphs. Okay, so uh, st strangely, actually, I mean, the bounds which were known were, were very far from the truth, even though the problem was, was very well studied. So later we're gonna see what is exactly the difficulty here. So the first bound was obtained by Kanan, um, Detali, and Vipala, which obtained uh, n to the power and d to the power 13 times some logs. And uh, later, Dyer, Greenhill, uh, Clear, Ross, Stuji. They got n to the 7, d to the 18 log ND. I mean, whatever it is, it's just far, far from the truth. So I should mention actually that uh, I le we learned actually from Kat Catherine Greenhill, but also Tetali confirmed that this result is actually wrong. I mean, the proof is wrong. 
it's published with the proof as well. But it, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, so these are the bounds which are known. And what is actually known is that like uh, there are tons, tons of work on the switch chain, but on other models of graphs. Like instead of looking at the bipartite model, you would look at undirected model or directed model, or you take prescribed degrees. I mean, tons of things. But all of them are very, very much suboptimal. The bounds of the So what we what we proved was. Uh, with, with Kostya is the following. So we proved uh, the optimal uh, relaxation time. So for any D, which is less than, okay, so I'm going to write something ridiculous, but it's okay. We have that the relaxation time of Q bipartite is of order ND. And if D is fixed, When I mean fixed, it means it doesn't depend on n, so independent of n. Then uh, the mixing time is of order uh, n log square. Yeah, so, so we are, sorry, not of order because this is not true, it's smaller. Sorry. So, so are off by by a factor log n in in, in the case d. So maybe let me just remark a couple of things. So remark. Uh, so first, uh, yeah. So one over one one or three is not is not a magical number. Okay. So uh, yeah. Just I mean. We pushed. We, I mean, we didn't push too hard, but uh, we, what we cared about is just to to get something which captured the growing polynomial at least to some power of n, just to to show some, because the case of d fixed is is actually easier than the case d growing. So probably with a lot a lot of work, this power with our method could be reduced maybe to one third, maybe, but maybe this is also. And another thing which I should add is that if D is fixed, so we 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 kind of know we know how to remove the log. So we, we know how to get the optimal answer. Another thing which I should add that I mean just big by I mean, even when D is growing, we also have a bound on the on the mixing time, uh, just by what I just said before about the relation between the relaxation time and the mixing time. So we always have then that the mixing time is smaller than uh, so N D times log of the size, which is N D log N D. So you get N D squared log N. So we are still off by a factor. And we're gonna see later. I mean, what, what's where, where all of this is coming? Uh, yeah. Last thing I should mention is that uh, so we haven't done it just because it's a lot of work, but uh, the method should extend in a reasonably uh, good way to cover undirected graph, directed. Graph, I mean, all of all of the other things as well. So uh, so good. Let me in. Yeah. Okay. Let me just tell you how, how we're gonna get to such thing. So uh, so so the road to let's call it theorem one. Road to theorem one uh, goes through uh, functional inequalities. Goes through. So relaxation time is normal because this is exactly Poincaré inequality. Uh, but uh, for um, for the mixing time, there is a relation with log sobolev inequality, which I'm going to just state here. Functional inequalities. So I'm going to say that uh, a, set, a priority space omega pi with the Markov generator Q satisfies Poincaré inequality. With constant alpha, say, uh, if uh, 
whenever you, for any function on my set, every time I, I look at the variance with respect to this measure pi of my function, I can bound it by alpha times the Dirichlet form with respect to pi and q. So what is the Dirichlet form? It's just uh, a qf, so maybe minus f, uh, qf, sorry, dot f with respect to pi. So this is nothing but the sum over x neighbor to y of pi of x, q of x, y, f of x minus f of y squared. Maybe there is a one half here. So, so Poincaré inequality is telling me that I can bound the global variations of any function, which is given by the variance, by local variations. And the local variations are captured by what it means to be local, which is given by the chain. The chain is dictating what is the locality. So uh, yeah, as, as I said, so the relaxation time of Q is is uh, is this Poincaré constant. And similarly, I'm going to say that uh, omega pi Q satisfies a log Sobolev inequality. Sobolev inequality. If uh, if the entropy now, so so if for any function from omega to r, if I look at the entropy with respect to pi of my function square, so this is nothing but the expectation of x square log f square minus the expectation of f square log of the expectation of f square. This is smaller than alpha times the Dirichlet form. So as there is a relation between uh, between the relaxation time and the Poincaré constant, there is another one between the mixing time and the log Sobolev constant. And it's given by the following. So the mixing time of my of my uh, of my of my generator is uh, smaller again up to some constant than alpha log Sobolev and I paid the price of log log of one one over the smallest probability in my space so that's minimum of five x Okay, so uh, so for us, maybe let maybe just recall that for us, this term here is log log of the size of bipartite graph. So log log of e to the n d log n d. So you get just an extra log, and this explains the extra log we have there. So okay, so let me just state this theorem. So what we what we actually prove is that we have optimal uh, Poincaré and optimal log Sobolev inequalities. So, so bipart the set of bipartite and the uh, equipped with the measure by, by sorry, by, by bipartite and with the switch chain satisfies uh, Poincaré inequality with constant uh, nd. Yeah, I mean, a constant, which is some constant times nd. I'm just going to write nd. Uh, so this is if f, if, sorry, d is smaller than n to the power 1 over 1, 1, 4, 3. And if d is constant, is independent of n, then it also satisfies log Sobolev. Uh, with constant nd log nd. And as I said, just, just, I mean, yeah, d, I can remove d here. And log n. So as I said, now you just use this relation here and you, you will have an additional log coming from here. And that's how we have from theorem one that the, the mixing time is n log squared. So, but maybe the first remark here, the first remark is that this result is, is actually optimal. So, so this is sharp. 
So to see, to see this, uh, let me let me just give you a test function, which uh, which gonna show directly that it is optimal. So take f. So I'm gonna define a function on bipartite graph to be f of g is just equal to one if one one is an edge and zero otherwise. This test function is, is really very easy. Let's just check what is uh, what is the variance and what is the Dirichlet form for, for this function. So if you calculate the expectation of f, just the expectation of having one one as an edge, but you see everything is per, it's permutation invariant here. Like I can the edge one one is playing the same role as the others, and on average I have d uh, d connections over n. So the expectation of f is just two. So, so the variance of f is just of order t over. So this is for the variance. Now let's check the Dirichlet form. So the Dirichlet form of f is just equal to uh, the sum over all graphs which are neighbors um, pi by partite of g, q by partite of g g prime f of g minus f of g prime squared. Now, look carefully. I mean, this guy here is going to be always 0 unless one of them contains the edge 1, 1, and the other one doesn't contain the edge 1. Okay. So, so this is 0 unless say, I mean, by reversibility, we can just pick G to be the one having one one. So unless G has edge one one and zero and G prime doesn't. But remember G and G prime are neighbors. So they differ by a switch. And if one of them contains the edge one one and the other one doesn't contain the edge one one, it means this is where the, the switching is operating. So when I want to operate the switching, I need to choose two edges. But here, I don't have the choice of two edges. I only have the choice of one edge, because one one is already specified. So how many? So for a fixed G, I only have ND neighbors like that. So, so G, such G, if you want, has only ND neighbors like that. I mean, and the neighbors which who do not have the edge one one. Now this guy, remember, this guy is of is equal to one over uh, n d choose two. And remember that the proportion of graphs which have one one as an edge is d over n. So what you get is that this guy is d over n times one over n d choose two times the number of neighbor for of each, so which is n d. So this guy is just d over n, which is the variance, times 1 over n. So we, we just proved so that the Dirichlet form is actually of order the variance times 1 over n. So the Poincare constant is, is actually has to be bigger than n. OK. So uh, and we're going we're gonna to show that it is it's actually small. OK. And yeah, I didn't do for the entropy, but it works. It works the same. Good. So uh, yeah. So maybe one one advantage here that we didn't say is that uh, you can so we can write down now concentration inequalities for for I mean just using Lobsovalev inequality and uh, Poincaré inequality, we can deduce uh, some concentration inequalities for graph statistics. Concentration. Or graph statistics. So you can imagine any statistic you can write basically. I mean, as long as it is some Lipschitz statistic, you can write you can write down some concentration inequality for it. Good. Good, good. So I still have 15 minutes. Good. So so I'm gonna try to to tell you a little bit about the proof. So it's, I'm not going to be able to say a lot because the, the proof is quite long and technical. 
just going to focus on a couple of points which are uh, which are relatively new i think to to this type of problems so So the, the main idea of the proof is to is to basically implement some comparison procedure between our chain and some other chain. And the two, the other chain uh, that we are going to compare with is the one I introduced before, the, the one which is on the configuration model and the one which is on the permutation. Now comparison of Markov chains and transfer, transferring the mixing time between one chain to another, this is something very common and very well studied. The only difference here is that I mean usually you compare chains which let's say they are on the same state space or their state space is in uh, there is a bijection between their state spaces at least I mean their state spaces are kind of comparable the main difficulty here is that the state space of our chain uh, which is the set of bipartite graph is going to be much much smaller than the state space of configuration models just because as d is growing the size is just extremely small and as far as I know, I, I don't think I've seen comparison procedure in, in such a set. And this is where new ideas are, are, are actually needed. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to tell. So, so let, let's recall just that the randomness, I mean, our probability space of bipartite Bipartite is kind of inherited from the configuration model. I mean, uh, you can you can start by. I mean, I haven't said that, but when you do the configuration model and you condition it to be simple, you get you get basically the uniform measure on bipartite graph. So the only issue there was that that we are creating multiple edges. So this guy is kind of inherited from from the, our other space, which is the configuration model equipped with this measure, which itself is inherited from the permutation model. So the main idea is to basically just uh, apply permutation. Now, this guy is extremely well studied. We know everything. We know the mixing time, relaxation time, log sublim inequality, everything you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the estimates which are present for the permutation model to the configuration model, and then from the configuration model to the bipartite model. And as I just said, this step here is going to be very easy, just because this is co completely standard. Like these two spaces, OK, they are not the same, but they are very much comparable in size. The main difficulty is to go from here to here, just because the size is extremely different. OK, so let me just. Yeah, I mean, I've I've said that the probability space here is kind of inherited from the other two, but we only defined the the chain on the on the smaller set on the bipartite graph. But I mean, we can extend this chain on natural for nat uh, to natural chains on the set of configuration model and the set of permutation. So let me just uh, quickly tell you what are these chains. So so on configuration model. So we can also basically just define the same way. We can define the generator Q configuration between G and G prime to be the same thing. You just pick any two edges and then you switch them. The only difference is that here we absolutely do not care if we create multiple edges. So if you create multiple edges, it's OK. While in the simple case, you just have to forbid this. So you can see that, I mean, our model is kind of the same chain, just has constraint, additional constraint to it. <coughs> So you just pick one edge. Just, I mean, one just technical side is that, I mean, since there is multiple edges, you need to decide which, which of the two multiple edges you're choosing to switch. So I have an additional factor here, but it doesn't matter. So I have multiplicity of the edges I'm, I'm just basically switching. But it really doesn't matter. Maybe this is G. So, if i j i prime j prime are switched and then you complete uh, you complete the chain by just putting on the diagonal you put minus the sum of everything else okay and on 
on the set of permutations, it's actually clear what is uh, what is the chain. It's just the transposition chain. I'm just basically um, flipping two two indices, so it's just the transposition. So pure permutation. Let's call them I don't know sigma sigma prime. It's just equal one over and d choose two if sigma and sigma prime differ by a transposition. Okay, so as I said, this guy here, the set of permutations equipped with uh, the uniform measure and with uh, this chain, the transposition chain, this is extremely well studied. So very well studied. And what do we know? We know basically, uh, so let me just know the name. So Diaconis and Shahani. Uh, basically, they proved, uh, I think, they, I'm not sure. They, uh, yeah, I think they also proved the log sobol, but there is another proof by Lee and Yao of uh, log sobol F constant and the Poincare constant. So what they proved is that Poincare constant is ND and log Sobolev constant is ND log ND. Which is the same as, as what we have. So the idea is just to, to transfer this estimate. So let's first transfer this estimate to the configuration model. First. So what should we do to, to transfer this estimate to the configuration model is, is the following. So if you want, if you would like to prove a Poincaré inequality or log of inequality on on uh, on configuration model, you will start by taking a function. So let f be a function on the set of configuration model. And you would like to use basically uh, the Poincaré and log of inequality that you know on this space. So you would like from this function to cook up another function which is on the set of permutations. But this is very easy here, just because you know already that your configuration model is constructed from the permutation model by for each permutation you are it's it's producing for you a multigraph, right? Sorry, not update configuration. So each permutation is leading to a multigraph. Now it's not it's not a uh, it's a I mean, a multigraph can have several permutations leading to. It, okay, so you have a factor of multi-mapping that you need to understand. But, but, but in itself, you have a way to go from permutation to configuration model. Right? So you just take uh, f tilde, define f tilde, which is on the set of permutations, such that uh, sorry uh, to r. F tilde of some permutation is just equal to F. So you have constructed a function on the set of permutations, and then you just use uh, log Sobolev and Poincare inequality for this function, and then you transfer it for the other one. So the main idea is that the variance of this function F tilde is kind of the variance of F up to some factors which depend on this multi, uh, multi many to one mapping, if you want. on the many to one factor field. Okay, but everything works well here and you can basically deduce, so conclusion here that uh, alpha Loxopolev and alpha Poincaré of the uh, configuration model is of order, so this one nd log nd, so n log m, and this one nd. So as I said, the main the main problem is to how to do it for, for uh, to how to pass it for the bipartite graph. So let me just uh, say this now. So 
So we have a function. So we want to prove Poincaré or log sub inequality on the set of bipartite graphs. So we start by a function on the set of bipartite graphs. And the main problem, well, the main the main goal is to basically extend, so extend f to a function on uh, on the set of con uh, on on set of multigraphs such that what so f to a function f tilde say such that the variance of f of our function in our original space by 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 bipartite is comparable to the variance, or at least let's say, just to be on the safe side, is smaller, say, than the variance of our new function of our, our extension in the new space, which we know how to compare it to the Dirichlet form, just because of the Poincare inequality and log sub inequality, which we know on the space. So we also need to compare the Dirichlet form. So we need to compare the Dirichlet form uh, in for the configuration model was the Dirichlet form of the, uh, the bipartite. So what is the main difficulty is that like these two, two constraints are tearing up in different directions, right? Like this one is making the global variations of, of the extension big, right? And this one is asking for the local variations of this extension to be small. So it's kind of like the, they, they are, Tearing in, in opposite directions. So this one global, this one is, is local. So how, how do we do this? So let me let me just tell you how we're gonna see how the case D fixed and the case D uh, infinity popping up. So let's take if D is fixed. So if D is fixed, then what I claim is that one is for free. So what I mean by one is for free, you can take any extension you like. So any F tilde works. So take any extension F tilde, it works. So why does it work? So if you just try to calculate the variance of F tilde in this space, I took any extension. So it's just a function which just on the set of bipartite graph coincide with, with F. So if I write what is this, just the sum of up to one half maybe, the pi conf of chi, by conf of g prime, f of g, f, sorry, f tilde of g minus f tilde of g prime. But surely the sum is bigger than the sum on bipartite graphs. Right? But remember, when this is fixed, my two spaces are kind of of comparable size. So these two probabilities here, pi conf and pi bipartite are just similar. They just differ by constant. So it doesn't matter. So this guy up to a constant, okay, this constant depends on D. It's, we, can, we know it explicitly. It's e to the minus D minus one square over two. Here it's just because we are squaring it, we get the variance of that. So we get one for free. Uh, you have it. You have it completely for free. You can take any extension you like. So since we can take any extension we like, we better now take care of two, and choosing the right extension, which basically gives us two. So what are we wanting? What do we want? We basically want to extend our function f in such a way that we minimize the Dirichlet form. So so this problem. I mean, uh, let me just interpret this problem like like this. So let's take the set of all Multigraphs. So this is a set of all multigraphs. I'm gonna interpret simple graphs as being a boundary in the set. So I have here. Sorry. Uh, so all, all of this here is this is bipartite graph, simple bipartite graphs, and here it's just all of the set. So what I, what I have is that I I want to find f tilde, which minimize minimize the Dirichlet form, but with boundary conditions which are. And this, we know what it is. It's the harmonic extension. So take F tilde, 
harmonic extension. Now, interestingly, we don't know how to do it directly. We don't know how to prove that the harmonic, we know that the harmonic extension works just because we know how to prove it differently. And the harmonic extension is the one which minimizes, so it works for the harmonic extension. We just don't know how to prove it directly just because working with the harmonic extension is kind of a pain because, I mean, we can write what it is, F tilde of G is just equal to, you just launch a random walk from, from your graph G. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, you just launch a random walk. So let's say this is G. You just launch a random walk. It hits the boundary somewhere every time. And then you just average over all of these places where it hits, right? So this is our, our harmonic extension. So, oh, sorry. So let's say XT where XT, where T, sorry, is, uh, time where it hits the boundary. And keeping track of all of these uh, 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 trajectory is kind of really a pain. So we, we are not able to calculate it, maybe it's possible. So instead we just mimic this idea that we need to do something which is harmonic. And instead of these random passes, what we do is that we just take direct trajectory to the boundary. So we take all direct trajectory to the boundary. What I mean by direct trajectory, I just take a trajectory where, the, so this guy has multiplicities and it have multiple edges. What I do is that at each step, I, I destroy multiple edge. At each step, I destroy multiple edge. So I'm getting closer and closer to the boundary until I just hit the boundary. And every time, I mean, I can do this in different orders. I can choose to destroy some other edge and switch it with some other. So I get plenty of these simple passes that we call, and then you average over all of, the boundary points that you get. Now, this procedure is not always possible. You cannot always just go directly to the boundary. Sometimes it's just not possible. Okay, so we need to do a cleaning up of our space first to say that for those who do not, cannot be reached this way, they do not matter, they are very little. Okay, so there is a lot, a lot of technical work here, but the main idea is, is basically this. Now, uh, I see my time is up, but let me just t tell you just one word is, uh, so if T goes to infinity, this fails. So why it fails is just because the harmonic extension like takes so much care of the local variations that it completely destroys the global variations. So in, in this setting, I do not have one for free. So I need to really take care of both. And so I need a way to recover global variations. So harmonic extension destroys, so yeah, it destroys global variations, global variations. So what we need, so uh, we need something like, uh, so we need to perturb this harmonic extension in such a way to keep to keep like the, the good point of the harmonic extension, which is the harmonicity, the local variation uh, thing. So to keep local variations controlled, but recover globals. And how, how can we do this is by the Gaussian free field. So, so instead of, so what we do, we do a random extension basically. So instead of, harmonic extension, take Gaussian free field, discrete Gaussian free field, where on average you are equal to the harmonic extension. So on average, you are keeping this all of these local variations. So locally, remember the Gaussian free field locally is, is very much uh, correlated, but as much as you get far in the graph, it's, you become very much uncorrelated so that you can recover the global variations. So if you are picking two points which are far apart, which is most likely the case when you are picking two guys at random, um, the Gaussian free field will tell me that they are completely uncorrelated and this allows me to, to get the, the, the variance base. So all of this is completely simplified because of course we do not take the Gaussian free field because we do not even take the harmonic extension. 
but what we are taking is a sort of harmonic extension which is simplified by these simple passes but we have some sort of uh, gaussian field which is associated to our to our uh, to our kind of harmonic extension if you want and yeah and uh, after this the main work is to basically re really prove that these extension work so to really be able to compare these Dirichlet forms and there is a lot of work here to construct what we call the uh, how do we call it the pass uh, uh, the, the 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 flow multi multi commodity flow I think method that's what how it's called but it's basically just comparing these Dirichlet forms. So yeah, I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, so yeah, I think I mean what is funny is this uh, this Gaussian free field with and the harmonic extension which pump up here, and it would be actually interesting to really first try to prove basically this result with the harmonic extension at least with D fixed. So we, we didn't know how to do it because we don't know we didn't know a lot about about uh, harmonic extension and Gaussian free field. So maybe it's possible to just prove it directly without, without us passing by this uh, simplified harmonic extension. And it would also be interesting to understand if there is a general phenomena which can be taken out of here. Like if, if I mean, when, when can we use the harmonic extension and the Gaussian free field to transfer mixing time and relaxation time uh, estimates from from Markov chain on some state space on some bigger, bigger state. Voila, I'll, I'll stop here. Okay, thank you, Pierre. So we can unmute ourselves and, uh, and clap. Okay, so do you have uh, questions or remarks? I have a question, uh, well, not, not really about the, the, the proof, but uh, about what you said in the very beginning. Uh, so I was wondering if the switch chain is expected to be the fastest way to, to sample uh, uh, on them by not, that no. no, no, I think there are other ways to sample. It's just, I think like people started with this one and then it became just a challenge to, to find the mixing time. There are other ways, but I, I, yeah, I don't have in mind. There is also other procedure where you do some like a couple of flips at the same time, or I don't know, some other type of flips. But yeah. Okay. No, I, I understand that uh, it's interesting anyway to understand the mixing time and uh, of the, the switch chain. But I was yeah, wondering, I since, you, since you mentioned yeah. it as motivation. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's just to sell it at the beginning. <laughs> And actually, so related to that, if you if you start with some uh, bipartite regular graph and you you um, permute the left vertices and independently you also permute the right vertices, th does that give something uniform over all bipartite regular graphs? Uh, what do you mean? You mean you mean you start with some connection on your. Uh... On, you start with some particular bipartite graph, and then you yes. switch. You completely permute. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't think so. Actually, uh, maybe I, I misunderstood basically the chain you're, you're saying. I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I just uh, I, I just asked my curiosity, but it's not. Uh, yeah, maybe I, I should add just one point at the end. So, how do we? Re how can we remove the log? The additional log is that we we can prove a modified log Sobolev inequality, which for the permutation model it's known to be uh, not n log n, it's known to be n, and uh, that's how we get n log n at the end. It's just the modified log Sobolev, the di more difficulty there is that you, this comparison method between the Dirichlet form, what we call this multi-commodity multi flow, these methods do not work for the modified log Sobolev inequality, but we know how to modify them to work here in this, in this setting.
I have okay, so another. Oh, please go. Can go ahead. So I, I had another question. Uh, so now it's it's uh, really related to your proofs. So, so one could, uh, instead of looking at the regular irregular Bapertat graphs, so one could look at other structures of graphs. Uh, so instead of uh, imposing that the sum of our rows and of our columns uh, in the address C matrix is D, you could have an, a, set, a certain set of constraints and then have uh, an analog of the switch chain. And in, in that case, do you think that you, your um, your methods uh, could be adapted? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said at the beginning. Yeah, I think, yeah. So whatever we did, probably was some additional work, of course, but it can be extended to if you have some prescribed degree sequence. But I mean, there should be some assumption on the prescribed degree sequence that you have at the beginning. But uh, yeah, I think, yeah, this method should work. But I'm also hoping that they could work in, in, a, in a more foundational level, like not just on graphs, like just as a general question about extending mixing time from Markov chain on a state space to a bigger one uh, under some constraint. But yeah, um, yeah, the short answer is yes. Okay, so I just have a question about uh, just um, the proof. Um, in the end, so you did not really explain uh, where your limitation on G appears. So it's with your comparison with uh, when you take the Gaussian free field, then naturally you, you are limited. Uh, I mean, you cannot take G as large as you want. No, all of what I've said here, D doesn't pump up. What really, really D pumps up is after we do this extension and we would like to take care of this comparison here. We just do not know how to do this comparison if, if D is growing, just too ugly to construct these passes that we need to, to compare these things. Okay. But I mean, if one, after, I mean, I expect that the same procedure should work if one knows how to construct, I mean, do the right thing here in this comparison. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the constraint on D is not coming from the fact that we are taking this extension. Okay. It's coming okay. from the fact that we are unable to, to do the technical work. Yeah, and one more thing. For example, I said at the beginning, we probably cannot go be beyond n to the one third or n to the one fourth or whatever. And this is because uh, we are not using the harmonic extension. I said we are using these simple passes that just go directly to the trajectory. And I said, okay, uh, some we cannot do this for everyone. Some people, we, they do not have this simple trajectory going to directly to the boundary. So we need to eliminate them. And we're not going to say that they are actually represent a small portion. And they only represent a small portion when D is smaller than n to the one third. But if one knows how to work directly with the harmonic extension instead of this, R, R, this I mean, fake thing, maybe it's maybe we won't have this restriction. Thank you. Uh, I also have a question. If, uh... Yes. Yes. Okay. I didn't know if I was. Yeah. So you you talked a bit about uh, a lot about the Poincaré inequality, but not so much about the um, the log Sobolev. Uh, is it really the same type? You use the same uh, extension procedure. I mean, uh, harmonic extension as well. And uh... yes. Yeah. It's really the same. It's just. I mean. Uh, I mean. Same here. We would have it for free as well. This one, if D is fixed. So for, and we only do it for D fixed. So yeah, this is the main point that here we do not know. So the variance, we know how to compare them when D is growing. We do not know how to compare entities. And I think this is just technical. Maybe maybe someone smarter can, can do this. And uh, and yeah, we just take the same extension and it also works. I mean, the d forms are the same in, in the case of Poincaré inequality and uh, log So yeah. Ah, yes, yes. So, yeah. Short Yes, it's just uh, the entropy which changes us. Yeah, so that's why, I mean, it's we are cheating a little bit. So we are getting kind of log Sobolev for free, if you want, because we are just taking D fixed. So we get the first part for free. The entropies are comparable yeah. for a different reason yeah. for the state say. And in general, there is no way to go from one to the other, right? To go from Poincaré to log Sobolev or vice versa. Or... 
so so there is one way so lox olive is stronger if you have lox olive if you have lox olive with constant alpha you have poincare also yeah yeah okay yeah thanks no uh, excuse me so for the initial uh, markov chain on random permutation you have a cutoff phenomena and do you expect here uh, to conserve the cutoff phenomena or not even when d is fixed yeah yeah like this is i think too too advanced now <laughs> uh i don't know i do not have clear intuition here but yeah the, uh, would say why not i mean if we are transferring everything why not but yeah i think we're we're very far from this but yeah good question other questions Okay, so if no, uh, we can thank again uh, Pierre for the very nice talk. <laughs>